Bon dia, benvinguts a una nova edició del col·loqui FMUPC. Agrair, com sempre, als membres del comitè organitzador i en especial al Juanjo Rue, que a partir d'ara serà qui agafarà les regnes d'això encara amb més força, com a membre de l'equip de Benal que és ara. And now uh, we are very grateful to have you here. Thank you very much for accepting this, uh, giving this lecture to us. It is an honor for us to, to have here Eddie Kurban, professor at Columbia, who was uh, an invited speaker at the 2006 ICM in Madrid. And, um, Professor Victor Rutgen, now we will introduce uh, yes. Thank you very much. Uh, you already said half of the things I wanted to say. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, well, Eric Urbani is a very well known professor in number theory, uh, an expert on the theory of periodic uh, L functions, or systems applications to divergence of the conjecture and local conjecture. Perhaps his most well-known result is a joint work with uh, Professor Chris Skinner at Kingston on when they proved the Ivasava's main conjecture for modular forms. Uh, but this is not the only one fantastic result of this. And well, he got his PhD in Paris under the direction of Jacques de Guin. As he mentioned, he was invited to the International Congress of Mathematicians in 2006 in Madrid. He was telling me now that this would be his second ever talk with Beamer in his life. <laughs> the first was at the International Congress, and this would be the second one. And that's it, the change. <laughs> So thank you very much for the honor of inviting me. Okay, so um, so as an introduction to, to the topic of this lecture, I just wanted to mention the well-known Ferrala uh, theorem. Um, uh, so saying that so if you take p and not prime. Uh, and you look at the, the equation x p plus y p to z equals z p uh, with x y and z are uh, integers, then uh, the only possible solutions are just a trivial one. So that means one of the integer x y or z has to be zero. And uh, it's well known that this uh, theorem was uh, unsolved for many years. Um, but, um, and, I mean, the, the final solution was obtained by Wise uh, in, in, uh, in 1994. Uh, but before Wise proved, there was many uh, work on Fermat theorem. And uh, <coughs> so maybe one of the, the first uh, proof of Fermat theorem for, uh, uh, for some prime p we, w was when uh, the, the ring of integer of the cyclotomic field, so uh, so if you consider the cyclotomic field where you adjoin the peak power root of unity, uh, then you, you can, from a solution, you can make a factorization like this. And so if you if you believe that the rule of, uh, of divisibility uh, for the ring of integer where you add this P power root to z uh, is the same as the, the rule of divisibility for, for z, meaning that this ring here is a unique factorization domain. So that means that you, any element in here you can decompose it uniquely as a product of irreducible element times some unit. So if if this string was a UFD, then using this factorization you would be able to prove that there is no non-trivial solution. Unfortunately, uh, this ring is, is not a UFD in general, and it's a kind of rare, it turns out. But only finite unit is not. And, but Kummer uh, noticed that if you can prove that the class, num the class number uh, of, of this field is prime to p, then actually, uh, using similar uh, um, techniques, you can, you can prove that Fermat's theorem holds for this prime p. Um, and, and so he called 
uh, he called such primes p regular primes. And uh, he, he showed later that um, many such primes exist. Uh, but I think it's still unknown if, if they are infinitely many. And it's, I think it's, a, it's conjecture, but it's unknown. <laughs> so the Bernoulli number are, are also quite well known, and uh, so so you can define. So there are rational numbers uh, that can be uh, defined using the generating series uh, given by uh, t over one minus exponential minus t, and you just look at the, the coefficient of the Taylor expansion, and you get the, the Bernoulli number of the n. So <coughs> actually, uh, so the B n are all for n odd except for n equals one. The B n are all equal to zero. So only for uh, even integer uh, B n are actually relevant. Um, and more generally, if you have chi a Dirichlet character below n, so a Dirichlet character is uh, if you look at z mod n z, and you take that the invertible element of this string, and the Dirichlet character is just a character of group. Uh, from z mod n z, uh, so c cross, uh, and, and this is called a Dirichlet character mod n. So when you have such a character, uh, so in, in that case, if you take an integer, uh, you say you say that k of n is equal to zero if um, if n and, and n are not are not are not relatively prime. <coughs> So you, if you take a Dirichlet character below n, then you can define another generating series and define the generalized Bernoulli number with, uh, with this one. So Kummer proved in 1950 that if p does not divide the product b2, b4 to b p minus 3, then p is a regular prime. And um, so that gave him a, a way to prove Fermat's theorem for, for many prime numbers. So the real, the, a refinement of, of the term of, of, of Kummer, of, this is called Kummer criterion, which is the term of Erbrand Rivet. So let me introduce some notation to, uh, to, to explain this. So you, you consider G the Galois group of Q of theta P over Q, of this cyclotomic field. And you consider the character from G to ZP cross. So ZP is a, is a ring of periodic integers. Uh, so you can think of this as a projective limit of z modulo p to the n b. And uh, so z p cross are just the invertible elements. So you have a character from g to z p cross uh, that is defined by the following formula. If you if you have, if you take sigma in the Galois group and you have you apply uh, sigma to this theta p, uh, then this is theta to some power, and, and, and actually this power is, uh, you can think of this power as an element in, in, ZP, in ZP because because p is annihilating uh, theta, and actually uh, this omega sigma is so, so some element in ZP cross uh, that satisfies this relation. And, and you can see using this that actually uh, this gives you an isomorphism between G and Z mod PZ cross, which is also isomorphic to the, the P minus 1 roots of unity inside ZP cross. Um, so you, now you can let uh, the group G, the Galois group G, act on the class group of Q of theta P. So uh, let me remind you that the, the class group is, is a group of fractional ideals, uh, which, which are just uh, uh, the non-trivial ideals of, um, of Q of theta P, I mean, they are finitely generated OF modules, um, and divided by the principal ideals. So this glass group is measuring the defect of, of the ring OF I have defined before to be a principal ideal domain. And, um, and, and, and it is a classical fact that when you take a number field and you consider the, the corresponding class group, this is the finite and that measures this defect. So let's call C the PCO subgroup of this class group. And, and then we have, because we have an action of G now on, the, on C, you can decompose it uh, 
according to uh, the, the characters of G. So you can decompose it C as a, as a direct sum of C of I, where C of I is the maximal sum of C uh, for which G acts by, by this character omega to the power of I. Okay, so this omega is sometimes called the Teichmuller character or uh, cyclotomic Teichmuller character. Um, and so we denote by H of I the order of C of I. So H of I is therefore power of P. Then a, a, a refinement of Kuhler's Wittering is, is, is given by the following theorem, so which is uh, due to Erbrandt and Ribet. So Erbrandt gives one direction and Ribet proves the other direction. Sometimes it's called the converse to Erbrandt theorem. So if you take I, an integer between 3 and P minus 2, then P divides H of I. In other words, C of I is non-trivial if and only if P divides the Bernoulli number B, P minus I. So this is a generalization of, of Kummer's criterion because Kummer proved that um, if you uh, If you look at, uh, at this group C, you can decompose it as, as C plus plus C minus. So where C minus is, is the sum of CI for odd I. <coughs> and, uh, and C plus is the sum of CI for even I. And you can call H plus the cardinality of C plus on H minus uh, the cardinality of, of C minus. And, and Kummer proved that that if P divides H plus, then P divides H minus. Okay. So it's why um, uh, having the criterion only for in odd integer is enough here. So this is a term of airborne to that. Um, so then there is a further refinement, which is a theorem of major ones that was probably in 1984. So, so let me... Um, uh, to do some notation, if you take alpha and beta two algebraic integers, so elements of Q bar, algebraic numbers, um, then we say that alpha are equivalent to beta if uh, alpha and beta have the same periodic valuation. So basically, that the periodic valuation is the highest power of p uh, that divides uh, uh, algebraic integer. So if you turn it by Q bar, the set of algebraic integer. Then you can always embed Q bar inside Q P bar. So Q P is is a is a field of of uh, periodic numbers. This is a fraction field of Z P. Okay. And uh, so you can you can find embeddings of uh, of of Q bar inside Q P bar, and you fix one of them. And and for uh, here you have what we have the, the periodic valuation. And, uh, and therefore, you can take, once you have fixed the embedding, you can you can define the periodic valuation of, of some uh, algebraic number. So um, actually, it's, here it's not really necessary because because actually the two numbers that I'm considering are, uh, are already inside QP. So, but um, anyway. So, so the term of Pisces mm -hmm. was tells you one. It tells you that actually uh, the cardinality of C i, which is H of i, is exactly given by the power of p, the highest power of p dividing uh, the Bernoulli number, the generalized Bernoulli number b one omega minus i. So I remind you that omega is is the Teichmuller uh, Teichmuller character that they defined before. So, so why is this? Bernoulli number is 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 is, uh, is here. So one way to say it is is to like Bernoulli number to L functions to Dirichlet <coughs> functions. So if you take a Dirichlet character chi, then you can consider what we call the L series. Uh, this is the sum from n to infinity of chi of n divided by n to the s, where s is some complex number, and and uh, and this series is convergent if the real part of s is, is strictly greater than one. 
of course, again, chi of n is equal to zero if if n is not prime to uh, <coughs> the level of chi. Chi is some Dirichlet character modulo some integer n, uh, capital n, and if small n is not prime to capital n, then this chi of n is just called just equal to zero. So this makes sense. And this is converging when the real part of s is bigger than one. And uh, so, I mean, if you take chi <coughs> to be the trivial Dirichlet <coughs> character, what you what you find here is just a Riemann zeta function. And you know, of course, that the Riemann zeta function is also convergent for real part of s bigger than one. So this is a similar argument uh, that works for this Dirichlet uh, L series. And uh, and then uh, with the same technique as the, the one used for the Riemann zeta function, you can show that this uh, this L function, as a function of S, actually has a meromorphic continuation to C. Uh, and actually, it is even holomorphic if k is not true. Okay. Uh, the, the case uh, where uh, k is, is trivial, which is the case of the Riemann set of function, is the only case when the L series is, is not holomorphic, but it has a pole at S equals 1. <coughs> so, <coughs> So the link between Bernoulli number in, and, and L series is given by the following formula: is that if you if you look at the value at one minus n of this L series, what you get is is, is generalized Bernoulli number. Um, and and here the, the, the condition is that n has to be greater or equal to one, and the same parity as k. Okay. So if you if you take k as a trivial character. And, and if you take some uh, even integer, um, then this is a, a well-known formula of, of um, uh, algebraicity of, uh, of the, the Riemann zeta values at, at odd negative integers. OK, so, so what is the idea of the proof of Meser-Weiss theorem? Um, so, so first, I, I, I need to mention that <coughs> the idea is, goes back to already Ribet's, uh, Ribet's theorem. So Ribet proved that if p divides, uh, so Ribet proved that if p divides uh, the Bernoulli number, uh, b1 uh, omega minus i, then p divides the class group uh, ci. Um, so the way he proved this was first to interpret uh, the class group as uh, the Galois group, I mean, the, the, actually the, the Pontryagin dual of the Galois group of uh, the maximal <laughs> extension of Q of theta P, which is unramified everywhere. So, so here L is the maximal unramified extension of Q of theta P. Um, so, what does that mean, unramified? Um, So you have a geometric way to see it. So if you have an uh, L on, on K, uh, so you can you can think of spec um, O L spec OK. So and, and think that this extension is unified is is just saying that this this covering here is is unramified. So if you think of curves. Uh, that just means that you have a finite cover of two curves, which is unmagnified everywhere at all points. Another way to see it is that if you take a p, uh, uh, a maximal ideal of the ring of integers of OK, uh, then uh, OL, the ring of integer of, of L, divided by POL, has no new potent. So this is for, for, for all prime, for all maximal ideal P of, of all. So, um, so class fit theory gives you actually a dictionary between class groups and uh, uh, unramified uh, abelian extensions of, of, of the ground field. So here this is Q of theta. So this is one of the ingredients that was used already in, in Rubens proof. Another ingredient was to study congruences between Eisenstein series on cusp forms. Um, and, and 
So I'm going to explain what SOS are later. But uh, also model, so using congruence between Isaac chain series and test form uh, and their corresponding Galois representations, then um, so Maisel and Wise prove that this L value, which is the same as the Bernini number, divides uh, the cardinality of Ci, H of I, and for I between 3 and P minus. Or integer minus <laughs> And then um, to deduce the equality, uh, and then to, to prove to, to deduce the equality from, from this divisibility for all i, uh, they use what we call the Dirichlet class, class number formula. So the Dirichlet class, class number formula for a number field f gives you so for a number field f you can define um, a theta function like the Riemann theta function which is for Q, so which is called the Dedekin theta function. And the Dedekin theta function has a pole at s equals 1, like the Riemann theta function. But when you look at, so when you take the Riemann theta function and look at the pole at s equals 1, what you get for the residue is 1. But when you take a, num a general number field, when you look at the residue of the Dedekin theta function at s equals 1, what you get for the formula of the residue, I didn't wrote it, but what you get is information about the invariance of the number field. So you get the number of uh, roots of unity, uh, you get uh, some power of pi corresponding to the embeddings of the number field in C or in R, you, you get the, the cardinality of the class group, and you, you get also um, uh, the regulators of the units. Um, so if you look at this formula for Q of theta and Q of theta p, Plus, so Q of theta p plus is what? Is uh, the elements of Q of theta p which are invariant by complex conjugation. So this is just the real elements of Q of theta p. <coughs> so um, it appears that the, there are not many differences between the units of Q of theta p plus and Q of theta p. And therefore, when you compare the two class number formula for Q of theta p and Q theta t p plus, and you, you divide you divide the two formula, what is left is just this formula, which means that the product of these L values is uh, up to a periodic unit the same as H minus, uh, which is the product of H of I for all the I. So therefore, you see that if you have this divisibility for all I, then you did, and from this equality here of, of periodic variation, then you get the equality uh, of the periodic variation for, for the Bernoulli number and for H of R. So this is what, this is how, uh, I mean, this is a strategy of proof of, of major wild theorem. Um, mm -hmm. so of course, this is a very sh uh, short way to say it. Uh, there is quite elaborated, uh, this is quite an elaborated proof and that uses Iwazawa theory in particular. So Iwazawa theory is just, Instead of looking at just Q of theta P, you just look at Q of theta P to the N for all integer N, and, and you look at this in a systematic way. So let me explain, uh, give me a, give a brief review of modular forms. So uh, a modular form of weight K is an event type of sky, K being some Dirichlet character, uh, is an amorphic function of the, the point carrier upper half plane H. Uh, the point carrier upper half plane is a uh, the half plane is the plane of complex number with imaginary part strictly positive. Okay. And uh, so it makes sense to speak about homomorphic functions on this plane. And, uh, and now if you... Um, if you take a, a, a matrix uh, ABCD, so we take the matrix <coughs> ABCD inside SL2Z, such that uh, uh, N divides C. What you get is the group gamma naught of N, the congruent subgroup gamma naught of, of N. And, and also, you, you, you can show that if you take a general matrix ABCD inside SL2 of R, then this matrix acts on the point area of power plane by what is called the Möbius transformation. This uh, Z gives you AZ plus B divided by C, Z plus D. So 
the imaginary part of this um, of this number is always positive, so it, it, it respects uh, the Poincaré of graph plane. And uh, so modular form is, is a function, a normomorphic function on this plane, Poincaré of graph plane, satisfying such such relation. Okay. And it, there is another condition is that uh, f has a limit at each cusp. Um, so so given not of n, if you look at the quotient h modulo gamma not of n, um, so you get uh, an hyperbolic uh, 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 surface um, which is not compact, and you can you can compactify at what we call the cusps, and you get a Riemann uh, a compact um, surface. Um, so one example of the cusp is the, the cusp i infinity. So here, saying that there's a limit at this cusp means that when you take z equal i y and you let y goes to infinity, then you have a limit. Okay. So we have this extra condition, um, and actually it is said this modular form is said cuspidal if the value at the cusps are zero. Okay. So um, if you if you look at, at this transformation for a matrix of the form one one zero one, you see that this function f satisfies f of z plus 1 equals f of z, and therefore you have uh, f as a Fourier expansion. And uh, so if you look at the Fourier expansion, uh, the Fourier expansion is of the form of sum from n equals 0 to infinity of a n exponential to i by n z. And the fact that you have no, you have no negative coefficients because of the cuspidality from the, the fact that f has a limit at the cusp, so I particularly have the cusp infinity. So, uh, and the, the value of the cusp at the cusp, uh, 0 here is um, f of i infinity, if you like, is just a naught. But you would have to, so, to show that for, you need to use this condition for all cusps. Okay, so, so now um, you can show that if you take q of uh, a prime, a uh, number which does not divide n, then you have what we call some operator called echo operator TQ that is defined by this formula and that transforms a modular form of weight okay, and never type of sky to another modular form of weight k okay, and never type of sky. And uh, uh, so we say that f is an eigenform <laughs> if all such prime Q, uh, TQ of f is just a multiple of f. And uh, so if you look at the at the Fourier expansion of f, assuming that the first coefficient here, a1 is equal to 1, then actually the, if f is an eigenform, uh, the eigenvalue, you can check that the eigenvalue is aq, aq of f. So this Fourier expansion record uh, <coughs> this uh, arithmetic <coughs> information, which is uh, this <coughs> number, and actually this number is, is an algebraic number. Uh, I mean, it's not difficult to see using the fact that you know that once you know that the, the space of, of modular form is, is, uh, is finite dimensional. And, and, and you have a rational structure. So, anyway, so uh, such a form is called an, eigen, <coughs> an eigenform. And uh, so, if you know a little bit about automorphic representation, when you have such an eigenform, you can attach to it actually in a unique way some automorphic representation of GL2. So Eisenstein series are uh, special cases of modular forms. So if you take k in integer, greater or equal to 3, and you take this neighbor type, this, uh, this zero shell character k, then you can, you can form this series um, where you sum over uh, all integer c and d, which are relatively prime, and such that c divides c. And if you look at by, by the redefinition of this series, you see that this this function has to be a modular form. It's going to, to satisfy the, the it's going to be invariant by the modulus transformation. Uh, so here, I'm assuming here that k is greater or equal to three to make sure that this series is actually absolutely convergent. But if you if you take k equals two, then you can define a similar series, but you're going to have <coughs> Add one variable plus two s here, uh, and, and this is going to be convergent when the real part of s is sufficiently large, and then you 
you can show that you have a meromorphic continuation. And, and you can also define Eisenstein series for k equals 2. Um, <coughs> but yes, for k equals 3, you just can write it this way. And so if you, if you uh, renormalize this Eisenstein series by some, uh, uh, actually, um, a Dirichlet L value, uh, you can get a modular form which uh, Fourier expansion is given by, by this formula. Um, so you have that the, the constant term, the value uh, for n equals zero here, is just this Dirichlet L value, L1 minus k chi over two, and then and then you have the Fourier coefficients uh, for n uh, bigger than one, which is given by this uh, famous formula. Um, so where you sum over the divisor of n, and then you sum k of d to d from d k and so on. And, and therefore, you, you can see that this eigenform, this form is actually an eigenform, and, and the eigenvalue of tq is given by this value. So, um, so something which is very important about modular forms is that uh, when you have an eigen an eigen form, then you can attach to it a Galois representation. So, so here GQ is an absolute Galois group of uh, of Q. So GQ is just uh, so you take all the automorphism of the algebraic closure of Q. So this is an infinite uh, profinite group. Um, and uh, so, so ZP is the ring of, in, of periodic integer, and then you can form the invertible matrix, so a GL2 ZP uh, uh, with description ZP. Uh, then, uh, when you have an eigenform of weight K and K, okay, then you can, you, you, you can associate to this eigenform a Galois obsession, so a, a, a group of morph continuous group homomorphism from GQ to GL to ZP. So GL to ZP is, is so GQ is, is, is a profinite group, so it's compact. Uh, it has a topology of profinite group and it's compact. And GL to ZP has also the topology of a profinite group and it's compact. Uh, ZP is the projective limit of Z mod P to the NZ, so it's profinite and, and you, you, you can show also that GL to, to ZP is profinite. So those so two are compact groups and, and this guy, this works. This homomorphism is continuous <coughs> with the final topology. And, and saying that is, is, is actually giving a lot of, info, of information about congruences between um, the values of, 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 of this, um, this row uh, So this work is characterized, characterized by the fact that uh, it is unramified outside NP, so out so in GQ, you have a, a group that is called the inertia subgroup uh, for all prime Q um, that measure actually uh, the ramification at, at source primes. Um, and uh, so saying that it is ramified is saying that the value at, of this inertia subgroup is trivial. And therefore, we can, uh, we can look at the value of this at the Frobenius automorphism. So the Frobenius automorphism acting on, for instance, the, the p-power roots of unity is the automorphism that Frobenius uh, Q is raising the power, the, 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 the p power of root of infinity to the power Q. Okay. Uh, and it is characterized by this property. So, and so the trace of, of the value of the Frobenius Q is given by AQ. So this is how it is characterized. It is characterizing, it is characterized by F. And we can also see that the determinant of this representation is given by the pseudotimic character to power 1 minus k times k. So moreover, if p does not divide the value ap, in that case, we say that f is ordinary at p. And, and in that case, rho f satisfies this, this following uh, uh, property that when you restrict rho f to the inner subgroup at p, then you the gamma, the representation has the following shape. So you have a, a line which is fixed, and, and, and then on the quotient, you have an action of by this character. So moreover, if f is cuspidal, then one can show that rho is absolutely reducible. 
Uh, and this is something that was observed by Rivet uh, when he, he proved his theorem, converse to a theorem. But on the other hand, if F is an Eisenstein series, then the corresponding error obsession is reducible, and actually you can you can write it uh, very precisely this way. So it's just this character plus the trivial character. And if you if you if you look at, at this formula here, you see that this is exactly the value of this cyclotomic character as a Frobenius element. Yeah, this is a, yeah, I took actually the, the arithmetic Frobenius. So now let's speak about Eisenstein congruences. So, so remember this Eisenstein series is here. So if p to the power m divides this value, then that means that modulo p to the m, this, this Fourier expansion has a constant term which is equal to zero, what is p to the m. And therefore, uh, that tells you that this Eisenstein series, what p to the m, looks like a cus four, because it has no constant term. And actually, one can prove, and that was observed by Rivet, that uh, there really exists, uh, I mean, Rivet did it for m equals 1, but you can do it for uh, the highest power of, of p dividing this L value, that actually there, is a, there exists a, a cuspidal modular form G, which is congruent to the Eisenstein series e -ka -ka, modulo p to the n. And this congruence means what? That means that the Fourier coefficients of both the the cusp form and the Eisenstein series are congruent to each other modulo p to the n. Uh, of course, it means here that you know that these Fourier coefficients here for G are actually algebraic integers. Uh, I just said that they are uh, algebraic numbers, but actually you can show that they are algebraic integers. So G is in general is not an eigenform. Uh, actually, this is a linear combination of eigenforms, but it's in general not an eigenform. But if for simplicity you assume that G is an eigenform, uh, and if you look at the corresponding Galois rotation rho G, uh, then rho G becomes reducible modulo p to the n because the Galois rotation attached to the Eisenstein series is reducible. So therefore, what you get here is 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 a Galois rotation rho G. <coughs> it's actually to Zp, which is irreducible. But modulo p to the m, it becomes reducible. So, if, using this irreducibility uh, condition, then you can you can choose a lattice in the space of the representation of rho g, so that after redu the reduction modulo p to the m, the, the, the corresponding hour rotation has the following shape. So where the star here is non-trivial. Remember, for the Eisenstein series, you have this. But because this is a more to is, is congruent to rho g, actually you can arrange the lattice so that with the OPDM this star is non-trivial. And it's not very difficult, uh, but it's sometimes sometimes it's surprising, but uh, it's not difficult to do this. Um, and, and therefore, it tells you actually, therefore, that you have an extension of Galois obsession. So, in the world that you, you, you have something like this. Um, you have your your latest module P to the M here, and here you have some up here. And you have an action on, on Galois here, but you have an exact sequence like this, uh, which is uh, for the action of Galois. So here you have a character, you have a character, and this is non-split. And therefore, that, therefore that gives you uh, a non-trivial element in the Galois cohomology of this. So this is the gamma, this is a, the cohomology of the group GQ, continuous cohomology of the group GQ, taking values in Z mod P game. And, and, and moreover, it is unmodified at P because 
If you look at the Fourier coefficient of a k chi at p, you get 1 plus chi of p, p to the k minus 1. So therefore, the Fourier coefficient of a k chi at p is prime to p. And therefore, the Fourier coefficient of a g is also prime to p. And therefore, rho g is, is ordinary, it satisfies this. Okay. So if you look at the form of this extension here, that tells you that, that this star here has to be zero when you reduce, when you restrict rho g to the inertia subgroup at p. And therefore, that tells you that the extension that you construct here is unmagnified. <coughs> and that's uh, not very far from showing that actually uh, you can construct an element in here. Because you can re interpret this Galois homology as, as, as something like this. So that's basically the idea uh, uh, to, to, to prove uh, my Zerwal theorem is that using, using those convergences, one can construct many elements in this Galois homology, and therefore one can construct many uh, unmummified extension uh, of, of Q of theta p, and, 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 and relating these unmummified extensions to the class group, uh, you can show that this generalized Bernoulli number divides h of r. Okay. So, of course, there is a lot of bookkeeping to do, uh, but if you uh, if you do that for all forms G convert to the Eisenstein series for all uh, <coughs> level, yes? Can you say again why, why the slide is unramified? Because I miss it. So, so it is unramified at, at P. At P because of, of, of the form of Pro G. Pro G should have a form like this. But when you look at Pro G modulo P to the N, is at this form. Which is, you see that the, the two characters are reversed. That means that this star oh, has to be zero, okay, when you reduce to the inertia. Okay. Um, so you have to, to you have some condition to you have to make sure that this character here is non trivial mm -hmm. module of like that. Um, okay. And I didn't speak about the unmodified condition at at other primes, but we know that both those gal rotation are unmodified away from n. So this gives you the ramification away from n. And for primes dividing n, then you, you have to work a little bit more. I mean it, it could be ramified, but there is a way to to keep track of the ramification and to, to enter it in, 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 the, in, the, in the constant term, in the convex model. So now let me speak about cyclotomic units. Um, so, yeah, so first, the Kumbra map. So if you look at uh, The map from Q bar cross to Q bar cross, which is raising x to the power of p to the n. Uh, this is a, a group homomorphism, and the kernel is what we call mu p n. It's just a, a p to the n uh, roots of unity. Um, and, and so, and so, you look at this exact sequence, then you have an action of the Galois group. So G, the Arturo Galois group G Q acts on this. And actually, uh, you look at the absolute Galois group of GF, where F is is, uh, is a number field, so an extension of Q inside Q bar. F, Q bar. So this, this absolute Galois group is just a uh, subgroup. <coughs> this is Galois group of Q bar over F. So if you look at the long exact sequence uh, of of group homology for this group GF acting on this exact sequence, what you get is that um, so you get mu n of mu mu p n of f f cross f cross this is just still raising n. and then you have the, the delta homomorphism that goes to h1 f and GF uh, mu p n and that continues. So, so, so this map is called the, the Fumer map to, for P to the N. And if you if you uh, do that for all powers of P, what you get is this Fumer map here, KF, uh, because mu. If you look at mu P N, 
as a, as a group, this is isomorphic to Z mod PM. Z, where the action is given by uh, the cyclotomic character. So it's why I, I, I put one, yes, the, the, the tail twist by one is just, um, ZP of one means that the action of, on ZP is just given by this cyclotomic character. So if you, if you look at, at this and you look at, you, you take the projective limit when n goes to infinity, then you get this map. This is called the Kummer map. Okay. Um, so each time you have an element in F cross, you can therefore construct uh, a cohomology class in H1 FZ pure form. Um, and actually, this Kummer map is also, is also very important uh, for studying elliptic uh, curves. Uh, you replace you replace GM by an elliptic curve and you have a Kummer map also like this. So, um, so if you take F Q of theta N, uh, and uh, in that case, what we have the subgroup, subgroup EN of the invertible element of, uh, of the ring of integer of Z, Z of theta N, uh, code of cyclotomic units, so there are the units which are of this form. Uh, you take theta n to some power a, then a product of 1 minus theta n to the power b, to the power rb, and if the sum of the rb are equal to zero, then you, it's not difficult to see that this is a, actually a unit, an invertible element uh, in, in, in this ring. Um, and in particular, you can even show that uh, if, if uh, n has two at least two distinct pr uh, prime divisor, then you can even show directly that one minus theta n is already a unit. I mean, you can show, that you can see that by just computing the norm from one uh, from q of theta n to um, to q. Anyway, so uh, if you apply the Kummer map to this element one minus theta n, you get an element c n inside. Uh, this, this Galois homology, and it satisfies the, the norm relations of an Euler system. And what does that mean? That, that means that if you take the core restriction from the Galois homology to, of Q theta n and to Q theta n, and basically <coughs> at the level of <coughs> elements in Q of theta n, that means just taking the norm from Q of theta n to Q of theta n, uh, then you, you, you get, you get if L does not divide N, we get 1 minus the Frobenius L uh, to the power minus 1 at ring of theta N, or you get CN if L divides N. So when you have a general Galois representation, you can, and you have a lattice that is uh, stable, the section of Galois, then you can define the Galois homology by taking values in this lattice. And then, uh, when you have elements like that, Cn in H1 of Q of theta n for this lattice, here's the lattice is EP of 1, uh, and you have a relation of this form, we, we get what we call an Euler system. So, I mention this because uh, so Euler system <coughs> were introduced by Cody Wagin um, and then Rubin. Um, in the 90s, uh, I mean, eight, 80s and, and 90s, and to, to prove some, um, some result towards the Bertrand Swindon-Dagnon conjecture, uh, I mean, originally by, um, by Cody Wagen, and then it was used by, this idea was used by, by Rubin uh, to prove the, some case of the BSD conjecture for Ticker's complex multiplication, and then he, he also wrote a, another proof of meso wise theorem using the cyclotomic, sorry, the system of cyclotomic units. So basically, the idea works as follows: uh, you, from the classes C n, you can construct torsion classes, kappa n, and this is called the Kolivagin derivatives, that are now classes uh, for the Galois homology at the bottom level for q, not q of theta n, but now with torsion coefficient. Instead of having zp of 1, then you have mu pn for some integer n. And, and those classes 
have some precise modification conditions. Basically, they are ramified at primes dividing n. When actually the, the those guys here were unramified everywhere because they are atto attached to units. <laughs> Oops. So, using those classes which are verified at certain points, and using to duality theorems, then you can show that if you have an element in C of i, then this element has to satisfy as many relations. And using those relations, you can actually bound the size of this group, C of i. And, uh, and uh, using these techniques, uh, Rubet proved that H of i divides this L value. And then again, what he did is that using all those divisibility uh, and using the Euclid class number formula, you get equality. Okay. So if you remember what the measure was proof, measure was proof the converse divisibility that this L value divides H of i. And here, using this other system of cyclic atomic units, uh, it, they prove that, uh, Rubin um, yeah. Rubin proved that H of i divides L. So therefore, if you combine the two approach, and if you forget about the Dirichlet class mm -hmm. number formula, okay. actually you get uh, another proof without invoking this Dirichlet class number formula. So in other words, the ideal situation is that for a given context, you have one way to prove a lower bound for the size of your class group, which is by using uh, Eisenstein congruences. Another way would be to prove an upper bound for the size of the class group using an Euler system. And um, so actually there is another situation where you can do this. This is the case uh, of um, uh, of, the el of elliptic curves. You take an elliptic curve of the rational with good ordinary reduction at p. So that the, the asset L value so uh, the, the function of the elliptic curve doesn't vanish at one. Uh, then is that, and so you have some condition that you have no p torsion point over some abelian extension of q. Then the p part of the virtual Swedenborg uh, conjecture holds, which means that you take the L value of e at one divided by the Neontech period of the elliptic curve. Then up to a power, power of p, this is the size of the Tetrahedral elliptic group times the product of some Tamagawa number. So I'm not going to explain all those quantities here now, but. Uh, you can think of this number here as a class number. Okay. Uh, and this is recording some ramification condition at the prime dividing the conductor of the elliptic curve. <coughs> so this uh, theorem was proved by showing first an upper bound for this, the size of the state of elliptic group. And this was use, done using an uh, earlier system. Um, so this was the work of Cato in 2004, the construct linear system using Ziegler units, which are units actually of in the, the, in the, in the ring of, of functions of the modular term. And, and, and using Eisenstein congruences, uh, scalar and I proved the, of the converse uh, divisibility. So putting everything together, then we get, we get this. Uh, So I talked about Eisenstein, ordinary Eisenstein congruences before, but so now if you look at the Eisenstein series E to k, and you just read uh, subtract E to k of p z, so in that case you get an Eisenstein series of level now n p, and and if you look at the constant term because of what we have done here, the, you have no longer uh, a constant term at, at least for the class infinity for this Eisenstein series. And actually, uh, the, 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 the meaning of this is that this Eisenstein series is, for, is periodically cuspid up in some sense. I'm not going to make it precise now. But basically, it, it means that uh, you can show that for uh, any powers of p, p to the n, you can find a cusp form, gn, which is going to be congruent to this Eisenstein series, and congruent here means that the Fourier coefficients are congruent. Um, and you can find congruences like that, uh, modulo uh, powers of p as high as, as you want. 
And, and if you look at the, the Galois rotation attached to GN, uh, this GN can be, in that case, this GN can be chosen to be an eigen form. Um, and uh, so therefore, if you look at the, uh, at the idea I have explained before for ordinary Eisenstein congruences, uh, you, you can find a lattice in the space of repetition of GN, and then such that through GN uh, mod P to the N is going to be of, of, of the form of 1, and here you're going to have um, uh, chi uh, epsilon inverse zero star and, and, and where the star is non trivial and if you if you combine this for all powers of p basically what you get is a class c chi that belongs to this Galois community <laughs> here uh, and you can think of this as uh, using the restriction to p of theta and as this Galois community but where the, the Galois group of Q of theta n over Q acts by the character k. So, so this raises the following question. Um, so this CK here are actually not integral. Uh, I mean, you cannot define it integrally. Uh, uh, and that comes from the fact that uh, there is no integral, uh, there is no good, a good integral theory of the space of over convergent modular forms. Um, but still, you, have this, this, you can construct this CK with this with coefficient in QP of 1. And that raises the following question. Is it a way to normalize those classes CK that, so that if you take this average here, uh, then you get exactly the image of 1 minus theta n by the Kuma map? So basically, is this average related to the cyclotomic units? Okay. And so I'm going to finish by. Uh, Stating the following theorem. Okay, at least there is a positive answer to this question. Um, so if you take <coughs> an integer, another integer between 1 and p minus 1, so for in each integer n, there exists a class Cn uh, in the Iwazawa homology, p of theta n. So you can think of the Iwazawa homology as looking at p of theta n times p to the n for all powers of p. Um, and and constructed using Eisenstein congruences and satisfying the normalization of an error system. And, uh, and moreover, so the image of C1, <laughs> so for n equals 1, inside the, the local uh, Iwazawa uh, community is actually uh, related to the uh, omega to, to the a branch of the kubota leopold periodical function. So the kubota leopold function is some periodical function that interpolates all those Dirichlet values when the, the character chi has a as a, a level of power. So let me give you some remarks. So the, the neutrality of, of those classes CN is, and the normalization are basically built in the construction. Um, but so what is difficult to show is that those classes are actually integral. So they need take values in ZP of 1. Here. And, and then, so I have two proofs to, to do this. One is using the Stickelberger theorem. Tigelberg theorem is a theorem that describes a, a specific annihilator of the class group of the cyclotomic units. Um, and, and, and this, this proof actually tells, tells me that the construction is actually the correct one. But, but because the Stigelberg theorem is only known for uh, cyclotomic fields, it's not very useful I mean, if we want to like, generalize this to other situations. But actually, I found another proof, which is purely automorphic, <laughs> and, and that used uh, the recent uh, development of the periodic Langlands correspondence for GL2Q. Um, and, and, and in particular, the, the three of blocks of uh, uh, Vitas Pascunas, um, and the local global compatibility of blocks. And, uh, and using this, uh, that tells me that actually this, this, this technique is generalizable. Uh, to get a uh, new error system. Um, and in, in a special case that I hope to, to do uh, in the near future is the case of the symmetric square of uh, uh, Thank you for your attention. <laughs>
the curiosity because of the techniques and the, some of the results you mentioned. Uh, these kind of techniques are, is there any chance to apply them or, or, or you think about applying them to some other standard conjectures in algebraic number theory like the Jokos conjecture are, are also they related to? I mean, this here? Well, in general, the techniques that you use. Well, I mean, so, so the, the technique of, of uh, congruences between, of ordinary and Eisenstein congruences, um, this technique now are, are developing a lot. Uh, so after the work, our work with Skinner, then it has been developed by other uh, mathematicians, so some of, some of my students and some of uh, Chris Skinner's stu students, and, in particular, they have developed, uh, I mean, so I'm thinking about Ming Lun Shi, who did it for Nidia Rigo Pew 2 1, over a total real, real fit, proving uh, some part of the, the main conjecture for uh, CM fields. And, uh, and then there is the work of uh, Chin Wan, who uh, looked at congruences, Eisenstein congruences for the unitary groups U3-1. Now is even looking at general unitary groups. And uh, that led to the proof of, of other main conjectures for unity curves, uh, from their forms in general. So this is on the size of Eisenstein congruences. Um, so on the size of Euler system, uh, there have also been a, a lot of development lately uh, by the, the work, especially the work of um, David Loeffler and Sarah Zerbos, um, who use, uh, um, again, the Siegel units uh, to, to construct uh, Euler system uh, by embedding GL2 in some other objective group. Um, uh, so in particular, the brain, brain star element that has also been used by uh, um, Henri Darmon, uh, Bertolini, and, and Victor. Uh, so so uh, they, that case, they, they prove the converse. That means that the case, uh, same groups, uh, generalization of uh, of, uh, of class group are bounded by, by, by size of L values. Um, but in general, it's quite difficult to construct real systems, uh, and, um, and and this gives actually another another approach. And what is uh, actually uh, interesting is that the real systems that can be constructed using this approach are actually totally disjoint by the real systems that are constructed using Ziegel Ziegel units. Really sometimes, <coughs> so it's kind of complementary. So if you attempt to construct a random system for the symmetric square of the integer, curve, yeah. aren't you afraid of approaching too much the famous gap of Wiles when he was trying to prove? Well, I mean, so Wiles tried to, 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 to construct a, another system uh, for the symmetric square using the Eden Sonfar element. And, and, and that could not work because uh, the Eden Sonfar element are only another system for the ranking that were uh, a product, a product of so take two modular, two, two cost form, and you take the corresponding error optimization, you take that sort of product. So this is something of dimension of, of degree four, where the symmetric square is something of degree of degree three. So, so of course there is this work of, of Fluffler and Derbus where they they take the two same modular form, and that case the, the, the ranking uh, product can split at some character times the symmetric square. But still, if you look at the normalization, the factors that show up is degree four. So it's kind of fake uh, area system to symmetric square. And that's a problem because um, in that case, you see that uh, mm -hmm. the eigenvalue one shows up with multiplicity two in the, in the L factor. And that was an obstruction to apply this method, this method for symmetric square. And actually, uh, um, Leffler and Zerbus do the symmetric square, but twisted by a character. And this character has to be non-trivial in particular, and I will not, not quote it, because of this, this problem. And I think that, uh, I think that uh, probably uh, Wiles ran into that problem. And, um, but yeah, so, the, so in, my, in, in the report that I have for constructing a simple symmetric square is completely different. I'm not going to look at Eisenstein congruences now for 
uh, Klingon type as instance series for GSP4. And, and in that case, um, so I have some work uh, before the work of this, this Chris uh, using those ordinary Eisenstein conversions to show that the, the same ergo for simultaneous has a lower band. But using non ordinary Eisenstein conversions for SP4 in that case, uh, using those techniques, uh, I should be able to find the same And therefore, that would mean proving the main conjecture using only Eisenstein conversions. Uh, and could you approach Fermat's theorem uh, using a flat <coughs> method? Uh, so could you repeat Well, I Fermat's think that, okay, so if, if this, uh, if, if I can make this project go until uh, uh, at the end, yes, of course, that would give another way to To repair the original proof, no? Yeah. To repair this proof. Well, I mean, it's not repairing the proof, but it's well, I mean, it basically proof, using the technical system, so. system to, uh, to get uh, another proof. Thank you very much.